Here we will draw a cross section of the ponds in anatomic orientation. First label the bottom of the diagram as anterior and the top as posterior. Then label the left side of the page as nuclei and the right side as tracks. Now draw its bulbous basis which resembles a bag of marbles. In the basis draw the corticofugal tracts which are the corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts. They are interspersed between large scattered supplementary motor nuclei called pontine nuclei. Corticopontine fibers synapse on the pontine nuclei and project to the contralateral cerebellum to help in motor planning. Now move to the pontine tegmentum. Show the medial lemniscus in the medial ventral tegmentum. Unlike in the midbrain where the red nuclei push the medial lemniscus out laterally, in the pons and below, the medial lemniscus lies medially. Next, show the anterior lateral system lateral to the medial lemniscus. Internal to them both, draw the anterior trigeminal thalamic tract. The posterior trigeminal thalamic tract fibers only first bundle in the midbrain and are not found in our cross section of the pons. Now let's show the medial lying supplementary motor and sensory tracts of the pontine tegmentum. Indicate that the medial longitudinal fasciculus and the tectobulbospinal tract descend the dorsal midline tegmentum, whereas the rubrospinal and central tegmental tracts lie laterally. They shift progressively laterally as they descend through the pons and medulla. Next, label the cerebrospinal fluid space of the pons as the fourth ventricle, and show the neurobehavioral central gray area surrounds it here and throughout the rest of the neuroaxis. In the midbrain, this area is called the periaqueductal gray area. Also show the raphe nuclei in midline. They span the midline rostrocaudal axis of the brainstem. Lateral to the raphe nuclei indicate the reticular formation. Now label the locus ceruleus. It lies in the lateral floor of the fourth ventricle and releases noradrenaline. Next, label the presence of the cranial nerve 5, 6, 7, and 8 nuclei in the dorsal pontine tegmentum. Then draw the pontine components of the auditory system, the lateral lemniscus in the lateral tegmentum, the trapezoid body, and the superior olivary nucleus in the anterior lateral tegmentum. Next, draw the extensive cerebellar structures that attach to the pontine tectum. First show the brachium conjunctivum of the superior cerebellar peduncle and then the inferior cerebellar peduncle which comprises the restiform and juxtarestiform bodies. The superior cerebellar peduncle is functionally associated with the midbrain and the inferior cerebellar peduncle with the medulla. However, they technically lie at rostral and caudal levels of the pons respectively. Next, show that the middle cerebellar peduncles lie along the lateral aspects of the pontine basis. Lastly, indicate the anterior spinocerebellar fibers in the posterolateral pons. This concludes our drawing of a cross-section through the pons.